Oh, man. Hey, welcome back. This is the Lost Omens podcast. I'm your DM here. GM, whatever. I'm Danny. Um, and welcome back to our wonderful circus of Wayward Wonders. I'm here with my friends. We just got done, you know, doing some circus type things. They just put on the most incredible performance. If you haven't listened to episode one, you should go back and do that. Start with episode zero. Get to know the group a little bit. Then listen to one. Now you're on episode two. They just had a spectacular circus performance, even though their ringmaster, Myron, was bitten by vipers multiple times and killed. He that got was, dead. That was a downer. Was Comparatively a downer. to how he would normally perform, uh, not much of a difference. <laughs> I think we are spinning the wrong light on this. It is more that our friend Mud got a promotion. Uh, Mud, true. the way we should yes. look. Yes. Mud, you definitely stepped up and you did amicably. Yeah. You Thank all you. did a wonderful job. Mud really took the reins on this. You set the lineup for which performances were going when. Uh, you talked down the acts who were getting a little full of themselves. You gave pep talks to the acts who needed it. When the family... Um, uh, all with the intimidate skill. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> when the Featherfall Five, that family, uh, the tightrope family, didn't want to perform because their nets had been shoot apart by rats. You said, all right, we'll do it instead. And you sent in two of your own to really steal the show. It was a beautiful job. You handled the ruffians and the drunkards and the vipers with ease. Honestly, it was a fantastic show, especially for your first big one here in your first night in Aberton. That being said, though, you do still have a dead ringmaster on your hands. So you're trying to figure out who done it. And why? Like, Myron was cool. He was respected. Axel didn't love him because Myron wouldn't let him audition for a while. Um, but, you know, under your tutelage and trash talking, I guess, you got him out there and he did a great job. So, you know, it's still kind of up in the air as to who may have done it. But that's what you're here to figure out. So we are out of the big top now. We are in the circus camp. And uh, what what do you want to do, guys? I think it would behoove us to investigate Myron's living space and see if there's anything that we can find that maybe reasons why someone will want him dead. That's stupid. We should uh, take a check into the place where Myron lived because it might hold uh, some clues, probably, mm-hmm. onto maybe what had happened. Mud, Mr. Brian, does that Brennan. sound like a good idea to you? <laughs> Splendid idea. Thank you. I say no for it. <laughs> so the way that the circus camp is set up, um, you are on a small stream with a pond attached to it. And the Circus of Wayward Wonders, they like to set their camp up with an easy access of water for obvious reasons, drinking, cleaning, uh, that sort of thing. Um, Relieving. Bathing. Yes, all That's of right. those things. So the way um, we have a... A map in front of us so if you're not on our patron on our patreon get on there so you can see this video of this excellently drawn map made by you know it almost looks like made by a husband who has a studio art degree <laughs> so um there is a stream that cuts through uh it goes just behind the circus tent there are a few caravans set up across from the stream there's an easy spot for crossing with stepping stones a small pond a campfire and some additional um, carriages where people sleep. So the uh, ringmaster's wagon has the star on it. It's right next to the fire. (laughs) Um, And so his personal wagon, Myron's personal wagon is parked very near the pond, right in front of the meeting fire. A colorful banner on each side of the wagon advertises the Circus of Wayward Wonders in large capital letters, surrounded by images that depict some of the most famous acts in the show. So, including um, the Fall Feather Five, Elysia and Mr. Tickles, and Mordain the the Magician. So three steps... um, Affixed to the wagon's rear, lead up to a red door with a golden knob. The door is locked, though. Not for long. (laughs) As I'm sure someone here can open it. I will attempt a thievery check using my thieves tools to unlock this. Okay. (laughs) 
How about an 11? Nope. Uh, may I I'll give attempt? it that a shot? Ah, yes, by all means. Uh, 15. No, sir. Almost there. So close. Uh, may I use someone's tools, please? There you go. Thank you. How about an 18? You got it. So I'll you, to loosen it up for you. I appreciate it. That's right. Third time, third time is charm, right? Yes. Um, all right. So you unlock the door. Wonderful. I would like to go in. Okay. I, I will pull my, uh, <clears throat> uh, my cloak along my left hand, just in case there is something I may need to flash it in front of or try an, an easy escape. Okay. So the wagon is lit with an ever-burning torch, so there is a golden hue. Oh. Yeah. That seems expensive. Seems like okay. our torch now. You know. Um, as it does. So it, as you s- step through uh, the door, you notice that um, there is like a a grainy like haze within uh, the cabin, almost like a, a sparkling a floating through the air as you as you enter. Interesting. I'm yeah. going to stop in my tracks. Okay. Uh, I have quite a large tail, and it will be <clears throat> a deterrent to others behind me to not come up the steps. And I will relay this information uh, with not moving much. Um, there seems to be a, a, a sparkling haze among uh, the air here, and I'm not used to this sort of thing. <laughs> if I may be smell like. <laughs> oh wait, sorry. Honestly, I don't I like have all folk, you know, all factories in my nose. I, I stick my tongue. Then why do you go first? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, interesting. All right. I will gladly investigate once Zarask has finished licking the air. I continue to swat my tail out of the way. So you're like positioned in the doorway, but your tail is sticking out of the doorway. Yes. To deter everybody yes. else from coming Just in, and you're licking the own. air. Yeah. Okay. Um, I thought you were moving out of the way so we could go in. No, no. Would I'm trying you, to keep you out. <laughs> would you make a will save for me? Yes. Uh, twenty-five. Okay, so you are good to go. Most probably because. You're just licking the air right now. Interesting. Does it taste odd? Uh, it tastes like spring, like springtime, like in a in a meadow. What's interesting about that is most things taste like manure mm. in yeah. the circus grounds. Yeah. Due to the large animals and humans. Yeah. So <laughs> this is very strange to me that so, it does not taste as uh, of, of sweat. You notice that there are a few of these plants positioned around the tent. Looks to me like a pitcher plant, but bulbous. Does anyone, is anyone here attuned to nature? Because if it's not some scraggly rock grass. Very little. I am naughty by nature. But not because I hate you. <laughs> there are four of these. Um, do a perception check for me. Well, actually, I don't even. Let's see what you roll. Eleven. You don't really need to do it. You see that the bottom bulb part of these, like pods, is kind of like contracting, and each time it contracts, some of the like sparkling dust puffs out. Interesting. Of them, M- uh, my friend Kurva. Uh, did you happen to bring any of your buckets? It's got a bucket. Uh, if <laughs> if if I may, if if you may go and retrieve. You're gonna ask me trouble. Here you go. Uh, how many of these plants? There are, are four. Uh, can you go retrieve three more of your buckets? Perhaps we can. I can hand you the three other ones that I'm already holding. Uh, you're <laughs> a, you you're our gentleman and a scholar. Dude's got buckets. <laughs> these uh, plants are, or these pots are about two feet tall. Uh, these buckets are not. <laughs> I take it. So I'm just telling you, like, for size reference. But I mean, like, you could. These are large plants, and I, I believe I am beyond my usefulness with anything in the form of nature. I don't even think that Brennan would be able to fit one of these pods in his mouth. I agree. It seems like I also it, agree that it's way too large, and I don't know what that pollen is. There's only one way to find out. <laughs> They're larger than my head. <laughs> Brennan, lay down. <laughs> Anything in there besides the weird plants? Um, 
Yes. Are you coming in? So, Rusk, if you could stand aside, I would like to take a look around. I would like to caution at everyone of breathing too hard. Duly noted. I just, guys, so everyone knows, as the new ringmaster, this is my abode now. So, fight way. <laughs> just please be careful. Don't break any of my stuff. <laughs> All right, so anyone entering the wagon needs to do a will save for me. I'll be heading in and I got a 22. Okay. I got an 18. All right, so Curva, you Mm. uh, are confused. You don't know why you're even in this wagon. What is a wagon? Why is a wagon? I got one better. Who? (laughs) (laughs) Away. <laughs> <laughs> and you um you're confused for a round you take a negative two status penalty to perception checks and saves against mental efforts for three hours whoa wow okay i All will right. uh, try to perceive my surroundings here quickly okay as okay. i pass that check but i don't want to be in here longer than any two since curva seems worse for wear at 18. On packs of and what were you, you were just doing a perception check? Indeed. Uh, so the wagon's filled with many personal belongings gathered from his travels. There's no indication that he was expecting any sort of violence. And you find a uh, lesser Bravo's brew in a crystal vial. Oh, what was the first one? So he wasn't expecting violence? Oh, but a, lesser... a lesser Bravo's brew in a crystal vial. Did I happen to notice if there were any windows in the establishment? Um, I would assume that there would be. Uh, my friend... Brendan. Brendan. <clears throat> yes, that's what I said. Uh, is there a chance that you could potentially open the windows so we can get uh, clean air flowing? That does make sense. I should, shall do that. I appreciate... I, I am also attuned to, to holding my breath for long periods of time if you would like me to continue the investigation. Sounds good to me. I'll open the windows and take my leave. Okay. With this brew that I found. Uh, I have a general feat of breath control. Okay. Um, which means I can hold my breath for 25 times as long as usual before suffocating. Awesome. Oh. So around, cool. uh, if it, we go by human standards, 30 minutes. Wonderful. Do you I want could to be do... wrong. <laughs> Do you want to do a perception check to see what else you can find in this wagon? And I will take my time with it. All right. And I did not do great within 11. So there is that torch, though, the ever-burning torch. The phrase, see what you want to see, is engraved on it. Interesting. Yeah. And that's the only thing I see is important at the moment. That is all that you see that is important, yes. I will take the torch out to my who was our current ringleader, but is now apparently the new one, and hand it to him and say, uh, good sir, I believe this is now yours. Uh, I I also believe that. You are <laughs> regularly uh, impressive. I, I believe there's an inscription that may, if I may, uh, try one of the humanisms, shed some light on the subject. <laughs> I didn't get that one. <laughs> I, I wasn't listening earlier. Um, <laughs> what did this say? <laughs> it said, see what you want to see on it. Oh. Yeah. I mean, lights literally do nothing for me. I have dark vision. I don't care. Um, <laughs> <laughs> can I uh, make a, an occultism roll to see if maybe this has some s- hidden meaning? Sure. Natural 20. That would turn that to a 25. No alternative meaning. Oh, this is literal. Literal. <laughs> Awesome. Yep. Because he probably ever, needed this, obviously. It's uh, an ever burning torch. So, yep. yes. Yeah. So, thank you. Thank you so much. You're Humans very are so literal. Thank you for giving me what I already own. I will clap. You know, it's, it's hard to think at the moment, but it doesn't seem like there's anything that would uh, seem to incriminate anyone in his belongings or point us towards somebody who would wish him ill. What only brings us to is more nature, it yeah. solidifies our druid theory. Why? Why are your land plants so vicious? You don't have to deal with this on the open waters. <laughs> That's fair. Um, That's true. Can you get those plants out of there? I, I kind of don't like that. I, I will take another deep breath and 
grab as many as I can at once. So you either have to do a thievery check yes. or nature. Doesn't matter, thievery. Okay. <laughs> 17. Nah, you like gr- pick it up and it like starts to have one of those contractions and it's icky. So you, you put it back down. Um, I would like to not take these pants <laughs> out of here, sir. <laughs> All right. Well, is there a, a circus druid that may be able to help us? Uh, the circus druid is trying to kill people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that Eliza uh, has any ill will towards us. I believe she's part of this circus as anybody else here. Uh, she is suspect number one, being the viper druid that we have on staff. Uh, I don't believe she's a druid. She's merely a snake charmer. Is there a difference? I've seen yes. a druid actually morph into an animal before, so it, unless she can do that. She could oh, be a so the druid, druid is one of her snakes, you're saying? Uh, there is a potential that a druid may be a viper that we are attacking. What, uh, if you had to put, like... I killed as many as I found. I mean, how many are there left? <laughs> an ancestral description on Eliza. Uh, how would you define her? I mean, I don't think you're terribly off the mark. With? With, um, you know, a druidy-ish? I mean, I don't know. If you were to racially profile her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not comfortable with that, but probably a druid. Like, she's she, a human. She's there there human-y, we go. That's the word I was druid-y. looking for. I can't tell. These posters are terrible. As we have learned, <laughs> you simply cannot trust humans. I agree. She is now double suspect number one. We can look at her belongings, see if there's any, uh, I don't know, some something that could possibly tie her to being uh, being upset at uh, Myron. Would she have any reason to have been upset at Myron? No, actually, she and Myron, um, she, um, fuck. They've known each other for years, and they were really good friends. So, I mean, she's re- your really good friend now, right? Ah, I by proxy, this that is. So you could talk to her like equals. That's true, except we're not equals. I'm better than her. I must. So, right. I must agree. My mistake. That Curva is. Uh, I must remind you that Curva is currently out of his mind. So ah. this this suggestion is outlandish. <laughs> So, when did you guys find me? Why would, <laughs> can I can I make a uh I want to keep just saying occultism, but <laughs> can we make a check? Why would he have these in here? Or are these not in here on purpose? So you don't believe that these were like his house plants. Like, why would you have... Clearly, you see what it's done to Curva. He's acting like a... You know... Are they like an alarm strange. system? But you don't understand why anyone would have a plant like this, would willingly have a plant like this in their wagon. I mean, I don't see... If if you are... Con- Let me just think out loud for a second. If you have the ability to control animals outside of their, their regular nature, right? Why would you need to stupefy somebody first to to make sure that the viper can bite you nine times? That doesn't add up to me. And he was found dead outside of his house, right? Just on the on the carnival grounds? Yeah, he was in the tent, like backstage where you all were. If you're being bitten eight times, you know what I mean? Like a whole bunch of times and your legs are swelling up, viper poison doesn't work slowly. How would he have made it from there if he had been bitten? Why are these plants here? I don't get it. I believe a very good question. It's because they, the person who put the plants here, didn't want us to investigate this area. Maybe uh, to close it off from further investigations. If this was not my home now, <laughs> I would say let's just burn it. But my first inclination was maybe we should erupt it in fire. Um. I met a man once, a hobgoblin, who was an expert at removing things from far away. I I can't do that. That's not something that I can do. (laughs) Man, I wish it was. (laughs) Do we have a wizard? (laughs) 
<laughs> at the carnival Trying anywhere? Taking them out of the pots. Uh, if it's maybe, do we think that I, if I won't take a bigger dose if I go in there again? I would say that one dose is enough. Like it, it, I don't think that it stacks. I'm used to this goofy, go- goofy juice. So I'm going to go back in there and see if I can make anything happen with these plants. Okay. Just don't break anything by like falling into it or whatever. <laughs> they're loopy. Don't break anything that looks expensive. Got it. Yeah, actually. Yeah, that's fine. Um, what kind of check do you want? Um, either thievery or nature, or if you can justify anything else to get these, po- um, little pollen pod doodads out of there they're in they're in pots of some sort no they're kind of like um just like affixed to the floor easy enough to pull up though all right well i'll 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 go for thievery first i guess okay can you just stomp on them oh yeah that would be better because i got a 10 well if you stomp on them uh, Curva, because you are from like a, a rainforest area, um, I rolled. I don't know if you have recall knowledge, but I'm gonna say that you do because I just rolled it for you. Um, because <laughs> I'm in charge. Um, <laughs> well, but, not, not to interrupt, <laughs> but <laughs> the way that these plants are structured, you can tell if you stomp on one, um, it's just going to. Uh, be sort of like a, a whoopee cushion in a way where like you can stomp mm. on it and it's just going to blast more of that crazy pollen out into the air. So uh, I can do. I, can I dig around. Can I use my utility knife and just uh, or actually it's a crowbar, but uh, <laughs> yeah, can, I, can I just can I just dig around it and just take the thing out? Yes, you can I'll just do that. Do that. Um, and I do. Oh, I forgot. I have little little uh, thingamajiggies. Can I use my scalpel? And by that, I mean a rock. <laughs> um, I do also no. want to know at the beginning um, of each like normal session, you're supposed to get a hero point, and then depending on your acts of awesomeness, I give you additional hero points. Um, I want to have like a physical thingy, so you guys oh, all great. get a, a ride ticket. Oh, this is fantastic! Yay! One there you go. Ticket, One for Brennan. Oh, sorry. No, no. One for Fulgrim. And then Pass Ben, down. yours Pass is down. virtual. Boop. Oh. <laughs> in the mail. We're good. There we go. This one's for Ben. Uh, it may be there yeah. in three to five business days. Yeah. So we'll get some actual tickets or something. And, ching, and then you can ride the ride. He's got um, a ticket to ride. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you can kind of, you know, take a, a crowbar to one of these. And they're, you know, it's interesting because they've got like tendrils that have like those little tiny like root systems similar to a moss even those mosses don't have root systems but it looks similar to that that's affixing it to the wood on the floor of the wagon like veiny almost veiny and and they're throbbing you know just the way you describe that too just the <laughs> the pulsating at the these, bottom i'm going to take I, these jumanji flowers outside and then just throw them in the river <laughs> wait i well, all right <laughs> This could be interesting. It only matters for people downriver. <laughs> yeah, and that's not you guys, so sorry, Aberton. Someone else's problem. <laughs> <laughs> that family at the mill started acting real weird. Yo. I don't know why. They were all like, Whoa. what if we weaponize these against people that uh, heckle the show? Mm-hmm. You just why don't go we up just give there, it to the customers? Just go up there and be like, hey, this mail's weird. <laughs> Blow it in their face. I have seen, just give it to the customers to be, be totally honest. I'm having a great time. <laughs> I've seen human parents do that with a, 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 I believe they call it chloroform on a rag. Yeah. I wonder children. if we can make these into like a, like something that has a bunch of give, like a mm-hmm. small candy, like that's very gummy. We should talk to And you give it to your kids and then they'll just be loopy. Yeah. Fall asleep. Market that. <laughs> well, I already threw him in the river, so you're oh. welcome to go swimming, I guess. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to say it takes about 15 to 20 minutes since Brennan opened the windows. It's going to take about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, to air the wagon out before all the pollen has dispersed. I need that dead guy stank out of there anyway, so that's fine. <laughs> Oh my gosh, does you anybody... Some, you may need some additional carpet and tiling. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Some, it looks like somebody took a crowbar to the floor. <laughs> New carpet and tiling is actually pretty high on the list, so... <laughs> <laughs> um, does anyone else want to go in and check out poor old Myron's living space? 
Can we you know, I think I'm done with that first, place. Or? You guys have fun. Yeah, after it airs out, we might as well check okay. out my new digs. Yeah. All right. Anyone who wants to go in and make a perception test, go for it. I'm going to look around again. Oh, I have a natural 20 for a 28. Okay. I rolled a natural five oh, for Jesus. a natural, an unnatural eight. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, Brennan, you also see, you didn't notice this before because of the haze of the pollen. Um, you notice a bearskin hat marked with a gold leaf. Um, and you estimate this is probably worth like, I don't know, seven gold pieces. It's a nice hat. Okay. But unfortunately, my cheek pouches are full since I put that Bravo's <laughs> brew in there. Uh, don't I put my stuff in your mouth. Put it in the inside pocket of my coat. You could wear it. Oh, this I don't want to wear that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anybody else? I rolled an eight. Eh. <laughs> anyway. You find a living space. Uh, if I may attempt. Yeah, again. go for it. Uh, 17. All right. You also notice uh, hung on a peg is a cape that was worn by, you never knew him, uh, but people in the circus talk about him plenty. Um, it was worn by the skilled animal trainer named the Great Fortunato. And that's worth probably like five gold pieces. Animal trainer? I would like to stow this away under my current cape. All right. Is Fortunato somebody who... You sons of bitches! <laughs> so, um, he... Your paths never crossed in the circus world, uh, but you do remember that he was robbed and killed in an alleyway in Escadar. Um, and his bear, Bardolph, um, kind of became like a, a beloved mascot of the circus, and Myron couldn't bear to leave him behind in Escadar because he was afraid that... Huh? Couldn't bear to leave huh? him behind. <laughs> um, you know, couldn't leave him behind uh, in case Mistress Dusklight got to him for her celestial menagerie. So, of so course, she he made them into a cape. It's a logical conclusion <laughs> to that story. <laughs> um, no, he lives in Fortunato's old wagon, which is across the stream. Oh, that makes more sense. Yes. The bear is across the stream in a wagon. In a wagon, yeah. I Good thought it was the cape. Yeah. Perhaps we should check on this bear. I don't think we need to do that. <clears throat> I believe investigating our current snake charmer would be more prudent than this bear. Makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. Do we know where her wagon is? Uh, she is one of the accompanying wagons around the meeting fire. And she is... Yeah, you know, kind of winding down after the show. Okay. If you want to go and visit. Yes. Where did we move Myron's body to? It's still in the tent. Okay. Somebody else. I just threw a rug on it. Yeah. <laughs> I believe our friend Curva has put buckets on them. <laughs> <laughs> buckets for just snakes. a chorus I... with like three buckets over. <laughs> Like, like caution wet floor signs. <laughs> caution. Caution wet corpse. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be back later to uh, mop my uh, right. <laughs> Can Hi. we say that I have caution wet floor signs, <laughs> yes. please? Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we'll go to her wagon and, and knock if she's inside. If not, I'll speak to her outside. Okay, she, she's in there and she opens and she says, Oh, Brennan, hello. Um, uh, what, what can I uh, do you for? I was just, I was just, uh, checking to, uh, you know, att attending to Mr. Tickles in here. And, um, how is he doing? Uh, well, you know, he's got those, uh, the goblin packs and he should be okay in a day or two, but, um, you know, he's just, he's like one of my family. And after losing Myron today, um, you know, I'm just a little bit on on edge. I'm sh I'm sure you you can understand. You you didn't know Myron as well as the rest of us, but he he was nice. Yes, I, I knew him well enough. I, I could take a look at your snake for you if you. Would. Oh yeah, yes. I have yes. my medical bag with me this time. Yes, please. I I would that sure would make me feel a lot better. Very good. So I'll head inside. And first off, do I notice anything odd in here? You are kind of on edge because her um her wagon is just um. Like cage after cage after cage of snakes and reptiles. Ugh. Yeah. Um, but everything seems to be in pretty good order. It's just Mr. Tickles is lethargic, as they were saying, but the rest of her animals seem to be pretty fine. 
Okay. I will perform a medicine check on this snake and see what I can, if I can help in any way. Okay. We're going to have a 15. All right. Um, so you know um, the right kind of uh, mix of different uh, vitamins and tinctures and stuff to administer to him um, to help him get better. Um, and if you, if she administers this as you direct, he should get better in about three days' time. Hmm. Whereas typically the um, goblin pox would last a week to ten days. Oh, very good. While I'm doing this, I want to chat it up okay. with our Viper trainer here and and say, I understand that you and Myron were, were good friends, but I, I will be frank that it is unfortunately suspect uh, his means of death. Oh, I know. Those those viper bites, those were vicious and ferocious, and God bless him, because he must have been in excruciating pain before he finally took his last breath. And I know that it looks bad on me, but I was one of the ones, he and I, we were with Madame Dusklight, and we decided that we just couldn't take her anymore, and her awful... Uh, meanness and cruelty and so that is why we started out with a circus of wayward wanderers so she is awful and mean she is terrifying terrible and she looks at you when she's eaten her meals and it is very unsettling and i just i just couldn't do it anymore and so myron told me well hey you know elizia let's just start our own circus and i thought he was a dang crazy fool but Clearly, it brought us all together, and we did a good job tonight. And so, yeah, if there was one thing that he would have wanted before he passed, it would have been for a good first show. I, I fully agree. Could, could you elucidate me on to your whereabouts before the show started? Well, I, I was attendant to Mr. Tickles here because I noticed that he was not acting right, and I could not get him to eat or drink anything. Um, I, no offense to you. In your uh, heritage, but I did try to uh, tempt him with a mouse, and he was not—he um, was not interested in that mouse, which a, a field mouse from just over there in them woods. He normally would have just been all over as a python normally would be, and he just was not interested. And he would not eat it, and he would not drink anything, and he just wanted to sleep. And you can see now his body is curled. Um, around itself to maintain its warmth. So he, you know, I was, I was trying to see if I could um, get him to act normal so that we could perform today. And so I was here in my wagon. Hmm. First of all, I don't understand what it has to do with my ancestry. No, so I'm clearly a Yusoki, nothing to do with mice. It's very strange, but is there any way you have any kind of alibi for this? You've been in your wagon until the show. And then you're back in your wagon now. Uh, I mean, the the professor came in and checked on me and and told me when when you know the curtain call was going to be in a few minutes to try to get me to hustle on out of there. But oh, very good. Well, Eliza, I, I'm sorry that your uh, Mr. Tickles here is is under the weather. I, I do hope he gets better. As if you do these things, I told you a minute ago, he should be fine in about three days, well, which is much uh, quicker than usual. Goblin pox isn't anything too serious, but. We'll, we'll try to get him, in, you know, back on his feet, as it were, as quickly as possible. I, I do appreciate that uh, you would look into him and uh, double check on him. And uh, may I ask what uh, y'all did with the vipers that we found in the sands tonight? Oh, Curva stomped on them, and I believe she he threw them in the river. <laughs> oh, oh. I tried to convince him to... We, we milked them first. You helped of course. Yes, yes. Uh, after you left, I tried to convince him to give them to you, but Kerv insisted on stomping on them in the bucket. I think he had a good time with it. Uh, now, <laughs> now, now, Mr. Brandon, I will tell you, I obviously, I spend much of my time with um, with scaly creatures. It's a strange, strange thing that you do. Uh, you know, it's a family tradition. Um, those vipers that y'all found, uh, they were not right. That was, right. 
They no, that was not the way that a, a healthy viper should act. And she gestures over uh, to another wall where you can see Carefully that she has other vipers. <laughs> uh, you see, my vipers, they are their eyes are very clear and they are obviously looking at you um, and looking at me. And, but they are not um, uh, hostile in any way. Mm. Those vipers, they were... Um, they were placated in a way that I don't know. Uh, it just it it wasn't right the way that they looked. Hmm. Do you think they were so magically controlled? Is our an idea we have at the moment? Uh, I I don't dabble too much in the magics, but it did seem as if uh, the bite marks on Myron, the the number of them, and the ferociousness that was not a typical. Of viper behavior, so I would not be surprised if there was some kind of magic involved in in those vipers. So you yourself are not a Jewid? No, no, God, no. Ah, I knew it. <laughs> Very good. Have, uh, enjoy your night as, as much as you can, given these circumstances. I'm, I'm assuming we will have some kind of um, late rest ceremony for Myron soon, and um, if I hear anything, I'll let you know. Uh, Otherwise, enjoy your time with your snakes. Thank, thank you, Brandon. What I'm hearing is I did the exact right thing by stomping a bunch of vipers. <laughs> <laughs> She's horrified. <laughs> I will return to the rest of the group and, and relate to them what I learned and suggest that we should probably speak with the professor uh, to corroborate Eliza's story. Okay. Uh, he's in one of the nearby wagons. You're all pretty familiar. Um, what was I going to say? First things first. Also, we but should probably. She's not a druid. That's what she told you. <laughs> that is what she told me. That is that is very true. Hmm. Hmm. Couple things. First, we haven't ruled out that she's not a druid yet. Second, I just did. We should probably talk to the professor. Agree. Third, you guys go talk to the professor. I am going to prepare. Uh... Myron's body for a service and for the keys to my new house. <laughs> <laughs> the first part of that makes perfect sense. Oh, you would bury him before taking the keys to your new house? That seems awfully stupid for someone so apparently smart. Um, no, to, to, for you to prepare the body, you, you have the best abilities for that. Yeah. I, right. I, yep. I, yes. <laughs> I, I am confused, however. We got into his house with no problems. Yes, and I would prefer it that other people, uh, including you guys, a second time, don't get into my new house without problems. <laughs> because we did it unintentionally. You did it on my orders, and I would probably <laughs> never order you to do that again. Understood. I was aware. Okay. I yeah. thought this was common ground. What? That location. No. Oh. I, okay. Well, that's his house. He's he's ringleader now. Yeah. So he gets the fanciest digs with the most confusing plants known to man. <laughs> but we broke in, and and that doesn't make us ours. It wasn't the no. break in. He was the he was the ringleader. It was yes. his place. So when I pass, you can't you can't break and enter into your own house. Exactly. When I pass. Which will be long after all of you have passed. Um, I probably don't have long. That is almost certainly true, being your elf heritage. Don't ever call me that in public <laughs> ever again. You're an elf. I don't understand why not. It's you. Moving you are, on. <laughs> you, you're My apologies. Uh, remarkable. You're. I am redder. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, um, uh, <laughs> I, I'm going to go prepare the body. You guys continue. Obviously, Brennan has been affected uh, by those plants, uh, just like uh, Curva was, um, yes. and is not thinking straightly. So I would really true. like it uh, if Zaresk, uh, if you kept an eye on Brennan, because he's obviously not acting himself and is saying crazy things. So uh, Perfectly myself. I will go. Well, he didn't even know. He apparently couldn't even understand that uh, Eliza was a druid, which she obviously <laughs> is. So I, I'm going to go uh, check the ringmaster's pockets. 
Yes. Uh, and then we'll we'll have a, a bonfire later tonight. Brendan, I have a quick question. Yes. Uh, with the amount of venom running through um, Myron's body, you've, or anyone's body who may be attacked by vipers, <clears throat> yes, there is a good chance that there that specimen would be inedible. Myron? Anyone who has been attacked by vipers. Yes, the, the venom, especially the amount that he would must have been injected with with that many bites, would certainly make him inedible. Understood. But that's, it's... No, uh, that's He was a I, friend of ours. I hope you don't plan on actually eating him. No. I believe the plan is... To, well, he's inedible. I just mentioned a bonfire. I'm assuming that we are going to burn the corpse. So as not to right, attract any... because it's inedible. Yes. Yes. That is true. Right. We should move on. It's making Agreed. a lot of sense, can I say? <laughs> I feel like we're all on the same page here. You don't... Okay. All right, so Mud is checking Myron's pockets. Uh, Brennan and the rest of you, what are you doing? Who do you want to talk to now? What do you want to do? What's going on? What's happening? I suggest we talk to the professor to corroborate Elysia's story. Okay. All right, so you're going to head over to his uh, wagon. Now, his wagon is interesting because on the side of it is emblazoned, you know, in those, the circus banner type thing. Um, it says Professor Zarlian Chiosophus. Um, and it says Fire Eater, Juggler. But it's very old and very worn. And you know, since your time uh, in the Circus of Wayward Wonders, um, he is retired from that. And he just kind of helps out um, with prepping the acts and announcing each as they go out and like that sort of thing. So he's been like circus folk his entire life, but he doesn't do uh, juggling or fire eating anymore. And that's why he's got that raspy raspy kind of uh, tone to his voice. Uh, but he, you know, as you approach his wagon, you know, if you knock on the door, he opens it. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, Brennan, every, everybody else, please, uh, come on, come on in. I was just, I was just decompressing after a, a wonderful show. It was adequate. I have to say that it was the worst show that I've ever been to. Uh, somebody died at the beginning, and uh, there was <laughs> multiple things during the show that uh, went wrong, such as the uh, nets being in through and the snakes underneath the bleachers. Uh, there was uh, multiple times when we were interrupted by uh, drunks and ruffians. I, I, I do apologize to you, Professor, to uh, because I did. Um, Give them such strong drinks. I will water them down in the future. Ah, no, no. Oh, vulgar, my boy. Rough, Drunks and ruffians are how you know that a ship is healthy. You don't I, have drunks and ruffians. That means someone's up to something. I curva here. He he knows. Uh, Fulgrim, I know that you're not a uh, seasoned circus folk, but you know, a death before the show. Unfortunate, yes. Some uh, issues before each act. Look at how well you all ad- adapted and, and you kept the show rolling. And drunk ruffians, uh, the drunker they are, the more money they spend on games. That is true. That is very, very true. A couple of things there. Um, well, Fulgrim. First of all, as unfortunate as Myron's death is, terrible thing. That happened before the show. I don't believe that actually affected the show itself. And as for the things that went wrong, as Professor stated, we we overcame everything. Uh, it wasn't the best show, I will agree there. But in the future, we will, we will do much better, I'm sure. I, I believe I performed wonderfully. I didn't say you did. kill as many vipers as it takes. Well, I, I sincerely hope that we don't find any more vipers in the tent. That was uh, uh, very uh, unsettling. For and if for we do, patrons. <laughs> but Kerva, I'm glad to know that you you have your bucket and you will clean up, as it were. Kerva, the snake killer. I, I don't be know. Understood. I don't know that Elysia will really uh, in, enjoy that moniker, but it does seem to hold true. Now, uh, what can I do for you all? I was just about to to round up the gang so that we could get this fire going and have some dinner. How about Kerva, the viper snop stomper? 
Uh, more accurate. Perfect would be fine. <laughs> do do keep him away from Elysia's uh, collection, though. Understandable. Actually, we did come over here for a, a particular question. I just spoke with Elysia, um, since she's the one with the snakes, and mm. Myron was killed by snakes. She told me that she was in her wagon right up until the show started, and she said that you stopped by at one point. I just want to make sure that you could... Um, Acquiesce to this. Uh, yes, yes. I went through uh, each wagon, um, as is uh, typically what we did. You, you could remember from the Celestial Menagerie. Mm-hmm. You you go through, you do your curtain call. Uh, she was very broken up about Mr. Tickles. She was very nervous about that that monstrosity. Uh, and she was trying to, to bait him with different uh, food delicacies and, and water. And he just was not having any of it. Um, she seemed very worried, quite distraught. Um, but it, if you're asking if she had anything to do with Myron's death, I can tell you everything seemed to be in tip top shape in her wagon. Uh, and she joined us, you know, moments later, in the tent, uh, ready to do her best to perform whatever it is she could do with, with such a sleepy snake. Very good. Sounds like um, she has an alibi. Now, I don't know much about this, <clears throat> Mistress Dusklight, but do you think that she would have any... Um, do you think that she would have any um, way to disrupt the show? Uh, to make anyone come here and make us perform so poorly in front of all these adoring fans. Got a beast tamer, don't she? Uh, I mean, anything is possible, honestly. I don't know uh, specifically about her, but it's very possible that she could have sent someone here uh, to disrupt us in some way. You know, the the people in the stands, they looked like town yokels to me, but perhaps that, you know, she... She hired someone who knows as far as the animals go. She herself, I don't think is capable of, but a a woman of her uh, stature uh, and power, there's no telling what she might be able to do. Do you happen to know the issues that have been arising in town? I've heard that the townsfolk really needed a pick me up of sorts. It is a sad town. I went into town earlier to speak to the mayor and invite him personally, and uh, it's uh, they've been talking about how their crop yields are lower, uh, they're having fewer and fewer rains, their livestock are producing fewer and fewer um, animals. It's all just kind of a, a town on the decline, but these things tend to tend to wax and wane, and hopefully they'll be on their feet again. I'm just glad that so many of them decided to come out and, and uh, have us distract them happily uh, with our with our delightful show. Hopefully we've livened some spirits. I certainly yeah. hope so. I look. You over. know, it's uh, it, we could go all around all, all around each other all night trying to figure out who did who did what, but we're going to put on another show. I think we should just focus our efforts on making sure that uh no animals are going to be disruptive again. Maybe oh. set up some traps. Absolutely. That's not a terrible idea. Um, you know, it, it might not be a bad idea to, um, you know, check the wagons, make sure if there were vipers or rats that snuck in to do damage before, who knows what might uh, find their way into different entryways and whatnot. Uh, we should you know, make sure that all the wagons are secure and, and check the surrounding area. Absolutely. Especially before it gets much darker out. That makes a lot of sense. Yes. Probably something that, uh, Mud would have thought of if they were here as well. I absolutely agree. He's the best. <laughs> <laughs> Just going to go ahead and write this little plus one. <laughs> the professor. <laughs> if I may, uh, and I say this to my mousy friend, <clears throat> if I may. Rhett? I believe that. You y- soaky? Yes, both. Yes. Um, our issues and the town's issues do not sound so dissimilar. Agreed. Maybe we should... But I, I like what the professor said about checking out around the camp some more tonight. We, maybe we can find some other clues or tracks or something like that. Uh, going to the town tomorrow sound, makes a lot of sense to me. 
We need to... Are we doing more shows here, or is our next show going to be somewhere further down the road? Or is that a question for Mud, apparently? Oh, the uh, the original plan was to stay here and, and do a few nights' shows and really polish up the act before we took this on the road. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, makes sense. Okay. So going to town makes sense anyway to, to advertise and, and, and drum up more anticipation for the show. Get more people here tomorrow and, or whenever our next show is. And see what else we can find while we're there. Since we are appearing to not have a feast this evening, regardless of the fact we are having a bonfire, perhaps checking around the camp is a wise decision. Yes. All right, well, I, I will accompany you. I will uh, start to start to get some festivities. We should celebrate a, a job well done and, and build up this fire and really, uh, you know, break bread together. Celebrate the life of Myron as well. Yes. Everything he brought to this circus. Indeed. Like Mud is the ringleader. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's something he did. It happened after his death. Yes, which was directly related. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Mud, you were checking Myron's pockets? Yes. There are no keys in his pockets. This is unfortunate. Um, okay. <laughs> what does he have in his pockets? Nothing. This sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and you think that is very strange because as the ringmaster, he should have a ring of keys to all of the wagons, all of the storage um, facilities that you have on wheels. Like, he should have a key ring. Who has been guarding his body? Nobody. It's a doppelganger. Drew, I'll go for it. What more do you want? <laughs> mm. <laughs> all right. Uh, I would like to take a stop over at the... Acrobatic family's house or tent. Okay. All right. So the acrobatic family's wagon is. It's the one labeled. No, it's over here. It's A9 that I labeled. So it's like two removed from the fire. All right. So, okay. I would like to give a an old uh, on their door. All right. So you hear behind you in the trees, the rustling of leaves as a hundred red-eyed rats scurry around in the foliage, foliage behind you. Oh, and then mud died. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you turn around, the rats surround a halfling woman wearing a headdress in the shape of a rat's head, its open mouth framing her face. Ah, isn't this a pretty sight? She cackles, twisting her grip on a gnarled staff. I had hoped to murder more of you while the whole town was watching. That would have frightened them away from here for good. But a bigger slaughter might have, might be even better. The foolish for farmers and poisoners of Abiton will discover your rat-chewed corpse. No one will know how it happens, but everyone will whisper that nature is taking its revenge. And it is through me. I'll wager most of the town will be gone in a week, and the rest will fall easily. Then, perhaps, the land can heal from the cancer known as Aberton. Let me get my mini. Uh-oh. Shit, where is she? Why can't I? Why is it? I know. I know. I found her. Where is she? So about that mini you just bought. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh. <laughs> <clears throat> Shit. She's here -ish. Yeah. Yeah. Who's anyone other than, uh, than Mud? I think I'd be really concerned that we left the ringleader all by himself, but <laughs> <laughs> he knows better than any of us how to take care of himself. Uh, all right. So can I react to her monologue real quick? Sure. Uh, I will take two fingers, and I will put one on both sides of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a very loud whistling sound, um, which anyone who knows me would say, 
Hey, friends. Um, <laughs> please come here. <laughs> <laughs> I do believe if uh, we find Mud uh, dead or deceased, that uh, I, Fulgrim, uh, will take the mantle of ringleader <laughs> of the circus. Thank you. That's Thank so you. Cool. Sounds um, like a conversation for the future. Would I be able to take a shot at her right now? Sure. Okay. Uh, I am going to spend a focus point. Okay. On uh, <sighs> you know, one of my things that I have. It's not in my character sheet, but like it's there. <laughs> uh, and I am going to let loose uh, an arrow from my bow. Okay. That's a natural 20. Oh, shnikes. Which okay. is very nice because this focus spell I cast happens to give my weapon uh, a striking rune. Oh, oh, oh. oh, dang. So you're on three damage dice? Yeah. Woof. Yep, she did. <laughs> That's much better. Uh, so I just roll damage? Is that cool? Yeah. Yep. All right, sweet. Yep. Uh, it's okay. 12 damage. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. Fuck. Beautiful. I just lost the cap to the marker. That's all. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. All right. All right. So she... Says, I am going to. Oh, wait, hold on. I'm sorry. There's more there. Uh, It has deadly, so I get an extra d10, which is eight. So that is 20 damage. Jeez. (laughs) There was a BBEG. (laughs) She says, I'm going to cleanse this land of all of you and all of your filth. And she, um, she gestures with her staff and a giant rat and a rat swarm rushes towards you. Huh. So you guys found out where those rats came from. Woo! We did it! I wonder if they're related or in any way uh, accompanying the uh, Kefolk Mistress Lesquite. All right. So the giant rat is going to use its jaws. That's a nine. So I'm guessing that that's no good. It is. Um, as I've spent uh, one of my focus spells, though, uh, my AC is, in fact, lowered. Oh, okay. Um. All right. So that hits. So it's a D6 plus one. So three damage from the giant rat. But it missed. Right. Oh, I thought you said... No. It's like it missed. It's yeah. lower. Oh, it's right. Just, gotcha. It's Never not mind. nine. Just kidding. <laughs> I was it's like, what? Low. I don't know. That's, that's I don't know. Low. <laughs> um, all right. And it's going to... So if I attack again, it takes a negative one, right? Negative five. Negative five. Oh, Shit. What? Okay. So... 13 I get a four if it's a if it's an agile weapon, which most unarmed attacks are. Yes, this is agile. Thank you. So that would be minus four. Uh, that's still going to be a miss. I'm at a 16 right okay. now. Okay. Super. Um... That's a miss, because that's a two. And the rat swarm is going to go at you as well. Um, and they're going to use swarming bites, which is, sounds freaking gross. Not a huge fan of this situation. <laughs> All right, I missed you anyway with that one, so that's okay. Yeah, these guys suck. Uh, so minus four... But it doesn't have any bonuses, right? Yeah, all right, so that one misses. All right, so the rats suck. They're really tired from chewing on ropes, though, you know? Yeah, that's probably fair. Yeah, pushing all that rope really takes it out of them. Um, So let's take a minute. The rest of you, did you hear the whistle? Do you go running to help Mud? Yes, of course. I don't think we were too far away to not hear the whistle. Yeah. Might even hear her monologue. You could you're really not that far away. No. Uh, is it time that we perhaps roll initiative? I would say so. Yes. Um, on good. the map, are we uh, portrayed accurately? Are they actually that far away? 
they are they're 20 feet away all of them are within 20 feet of me yes that is perfect <laughs> as initiative is rolled i will spend another focus point <laughs> okay and my more things happen to me but um <laughs> everyone receives plus two on their initiative roll and one temporary hit point. Ooh, super. Huzzah. What a guy. As that happens, uh, not that anyone's there to notice this, but my form shifts a little bit. And, uh, yeah, I just, I just look really healthy. And that's it. <laughs> Interesting. Indubitably. <clears throat> All right, let's talk uh, initiative. I have rolled a 22. 22. Anybody higher than 22? 26. 26 for Curva. All right, 26, 22. All right, uh, who's after 22? 17. 18. Oh. All right, Fulgrim at 18. Slower than a dwarf. Brennan at 17. And then what's or nuts is after that. Mud is at a 15. All right, so Nemia. Oh, 17. I'm sorry. All right, so you do go before Nemia. Okay. Cool. So let's start with Curva. What would you like to do? I'll ask Mr. Brennan, rat or her cat fling? I don't understand the context of this question. If I don't receive an answer, I'll just go for the I'll just go for the rat. Uh, go uh, stride up to the rat uh, okay. to within ten feet, if I can, with one stride. Sure. Try and put myself between me and uh, and mud. Uh, and then I'll use an ability <laughs> to strike it twice. <laughs> <laughs> an ability, I love it. Uh, now, if you were listening uh, in episode zero, we decided that we were not going to give away, uh, you know, what our character classes are. So we're trying to use very, um, what's that called? Can more or less say it at this point. It's flurry of blows. <laughs> All right. So if you know what that is, hit us up. Okay. So I'll spin my quarter mop in a circle and give uh, this rat two <laughs> two sound two sound wax okay. once with the blunt end and once with the wet end. <laughs> I don't know which end is worse, but uh, first strike is uh, an eleven. All right, you miss. Second strike is a natural 20. Got him. All right. With any bonuses, so, what does that come to? A natural 20. Sorry? No, go ahead. Oh. Uh, so that's, I roll the dice twice and then add the strength twice. Is okay. that about, is that the correct thing? Correct. So I hit for 16 damage. Wow. All right, so uh, explain how you go about killing this giant rat. So he seems to duck the blunt end, and I just turn in a full circle and use the momentum of my swing to just whap him with the with the with the wet end as it comes around, uh, preferably breaking his neck as it uh, as it strikes him on the chin. Okay, very good. And then I'll uh, use my last action to parry to give myself plus one AC until the next round. Okay. All right, Zeresk. <clears throat> Is there a, a chance that I may run more than my 25 feet? Is that an action? Is there, like, a dash or... Uh, stride? So because you have three actions, you can uh, take your movement more than once. So you can stride uh. and then say stride again. And then still have an action left to attack. So, uh, how far away do you think I would be from this wench? From her, you are approximately 30 feet. You're about will, 20 feet from mud. I will stride, um, which puts me short here. Okay. Which puts me within oh, 20 feet of her. 
You said 30. You were 30 feet. me within five feet of her. Okay. And then I will tumble through, which is an acrobatics check uh, to roll through her space. Um, And I get a natural one. So I fail and I tumble and roll into her. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) Uh. I do have another action. I I do stand up afterwards. Um, I do have another action. So I will try to strike her. Uh, it, it, I do as a failure of tumbling through um, trigger reactions as if I have moved out of the square that I was standing in. Okay. Um, if she has attack of opportunity, she, right. she could strike. All right. Back. Thank you. But I will attempt to strike uh, and I roll a 19. All right. And so if you meet her AC, then it's a hit. Yeah. All right. I don't like that at all. Uh, for six damage. Okay. I do believe that's how it's always been. Uh, I don't like the fact that her, he met her AC at a 19 <laughs> at level oh, one. I see what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, Fulgrim. You uh, hear the whistle? You hear the mud call? Ooh. Uh, Fulgrim? Uh, she'll take a, um, a pack off of his belt, uh, place it into a... Uh, a bottle that he has kept on his bandolier, charge forward and chuck it uh, within the 20 feet at that rat swarm. Okay, and you can remove the dead rat there. That guy. Yeah. Uh, if it hits. Let's see. <laughs> I saw All that right. roll. <laughs> There's JB. There it is. There he is. Uh, <laughs> so natural one. Uh, what Jeez. happens on a natural one? Uh, this thing goes flying wide. Uh, let's see. Uh, striking a tree, engulfing it in flames. Okay. You hear screams from the woods. I'm Good. Just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Kill all those fairies. Oh my god. I did not yeah. realize we were trying to murder children. The, no, the, the tree was full of pixies. All that. I get all the experience points. <laughs> Boom shakalaka. Nice. Uh, Fulgrim, do you want to do anything else? Was that all three of your actions? That would be all three of my actions. Okay, yes. cool. Brennan, you're next. First, I shall stride towards this person around the wagon that... Mud was about to go into. I must have the wrong name there. I will take from my cheek pouch a special weapon. A bola. Oh. I will throw it. A bola what? <laughs> a bowl of rainwater? Throw it's a bowl of rain. At this uh, halfling it was. And yes, she is a halfling. To knock her to the ground. Okay. Which is almost certainly not going to work. <laughs> not with that attitude. First I get a 24 to hit. Mm. Okay. But now I need to make an athletics check, <laughs> which I believe is at a minus four, minus one for my strength modifier. I also believe I have a penalty for it being a thrown trip attack. Okay. I get a healthy zero. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you throw it successfully. It hits her. It hits her, but it just kind of like literally like wraps around a single leg. Hits her. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> I, it breaks my heart to see animals working with these low life Everton humans. I will rid the world of all of you as soon as I untangle this from my leg. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of mumbled, well, that didn't work very well. <laughs> uh, is that one? Is that all three of your actions? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, mud. So, um, Mud has taken a little bit of a different different look, and he pats uh, Curva on the back and says, Well done, friend. All right, let's try to apprehend this villain, and then we can ask her questions about where she might have come from. <laughs> <laughs> oh my He'll God. take a step backwards and fire a shot at her from his bow. Okay. Yelling bully as he does. <laughs> this isn't good. Ha! He does not roll well at all. <laughs> the shot going wide, but 
It was just a warning shot. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, he's then going to fire a second time. Okay. Also not doing well. <laughs> oh God. All right. I nimbly dodge my head back out of the way. Not... Warning shots a little less close this time. I gave her two warnings. <laughs> and she is very small All in warning. stature. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So it's, uh, her name is Nemia. Um, she is going to attack Zeresk with her staff. Roll on a hot 12. That's misses. All right. I mean, let's try it again. Oh, that's a natural 20, Biatch. Unfortunately, that one hits. <laughs> Um, all right, so a staff does D one or D four minus one, which is super cute. Sounds familiar, right? It's a Brennan style thing. So I did one damage. Ouch! That's your temporary hit point gone. But if that's a natural twenty, I get to roll it again, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what has happened to Mud, but I kind of like it. Uh, and that's two damage. Ah. Is she gonna come at you one more time? Ooh. Yeah, that's a seven, so I'm assuming that's a no. I bat that one out of the way. All right, and then the rat swarm is going to swarm up on Brennan. Of course not. They look just like you. I like Ooh. how you say this. Ooh, swarming bites, baby. For 12? <laughs> no, that does no. not hit me. <laughs> no, 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 no. 14? Nope. I two. Sorry, uh, flag that. Uh, I think in second edition, and I think also in third edition. There's no first edition and second edition. God, I gotta stop drinking. Um, <laughs> no, you don't. Swarm bites each enemy in this swarm's space takes one d six piercing damage and has to attempt a DC seventeen reflex save. So for half damage or no damage. Uh, or get exposed to a filth viewer. So okay. if I can just like, move on to my space and they just crawl all over me. Okay. So they don't attack attack. Gotcha, right, gotcha, right, gotcha. Right, right. So I roll damage on that? Yeah. So I, I, need, I okay. get a reflex save. Uh, you get a DC 17, 17 DC reflex 17. save. <clears throat> For what? Save? Nope. Oh, no reflex. Mind. Right? Yeah. Six. Six damage? Yes. Very good. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> Doesn't seem very good. Not particularly great, but something about disease. What disease was it? Filth uh, fever. Oh, as a sewer rat, I'm immune. Oh, well, I mean, there you go. You've been filthy all along. <laughs> <laughs> That's smarts. Sorry, was that one of your attacks? All three. That's one for the swarm. Right? Yeah. Do they get three? Then? It's just the one. They just yeah. enter someone's space and then attack them at the end of the round. <laughs> I entered your space. Thanks, announcer. <laughs> and I hurt you when I was in your space. It did hurt. Back to the top. That's Curva. Well, I'll, I'll back up Zeresk here. Get back into his place. Uh, try to flank with him, and uh, so str- stride within. Uh, 10 feet of uh, this, I guess five feet. I'll get right up and close and personal with this halfling if someone can move my character. Uh, trying to flank with Zeresk, and then I'll uh, do the old quarter mop again. Oof. This thing was painful. Give her the quarter mop, you know. First is 17. Oh, dang. Okay, yep. Uh, nope, she's a 19, sorry. Even though I'm flanking? Well, what does that give you? Plus two? Minus two oh, to minus her two. armor okay. class. So there you go. You got it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Can it just be mud all the time? <laughs> so Which is you... 12 damage. Oh, shit. Sheesh. And second roll, it looks like I might be dropping my quarter mop. Oh, yikes. Uh, I got a four. All right. Which I think critically critical failures is you drop your your yeah, weapon. I believe that is correct. All right, and I'll I'll spend the rest of the spend the the last action picking my mop back up. Okay. All right. So, uh, at this point, uh, you notice Nemi is trying to like 
back away. She kind of like holds her hands up. That mop freaking hurts. It's like it's crusty. It's, and who knows where it's been? I she do. Says, <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> and she says, all right. All right. Stop. Stop hurting me. Just stop hurting me. And we will find out what's her deal next time on the Last Woman's Podcast. Is she with the other circus? She's obviously delirious. She thought we were humans. (laughs) Guess who's going to pee again?